Welcome to Buckets. This is Action Network's basketball betting podcast presented by FanDuel. And I'm your host, Maria Marino, joined by Action Network writer Jim Turvey to talk a little WNBA. We got just two games on the slate today, Friday, June 23rd. Jim, how we doing? Doing all right. I think they're, they're two kind of fun games. Um, the league's been kind of all over the place. It'll be fun to, to dive into, you know, what's been going on in the W. You and, and looking forward ahead to see see if we can get some winners. Yes, and we'll get your best bets in just a moment. But you sort of touched on the uh, chaotic nature of the season so far. Any early observations? Yeah, I feel like we we thought we had an observation, right? Like the the home underdogs, underdogs in particular, um, were really really doing well this season. Um, but you know, then then last night the home underdogs, we had three of them, and they got smoked by a dozen points each. So I. I it doesn't seem like there's anything really sticking out other than that there's one amazing team. Yes. There's one team that looks really bad, especially without their two best players. And then a lot of teams kind of in the middle there. And it's, it's really hard to figure out night to night, but it's a fun puzzle to solve. So uh, I, I think it'll be, it'll be fun going forward, trying to see, you know, what, what actually sticks and what's uh, a little bit noisy. All right. So when you say the one team that looks really bad without their two best players, I take it, you mean the Phoenix Mercury. <laughs> I do indeed. Yeah, it's going to be a tough season if those two don't come back sooner than later. And then, of course, you know, the Aces continue to dominate their opponents and the Connecticut Sun holding on uh, despite losing Bree Jones to an injury, getting another win last night. Yeah, that's true. I, I probably undersold them a little bit. They they have been really solid this season. I do worry the the only thing when I, you know, we were high on them before the yes. season. The only thing that gave me pause was they don't have a lot of depth and they handled yes. it really well. The first game without Brian Jones and yeah. they're still, I, as far as I know, there still isn't like an official verdict on if she's going to be Correct. out for the season, but everything sounds like not, not great news. So yeah. um, I, I still am high on them. I still think they're they'll reach like our preseason numbers that we got them at for sure. But I, I don't know if they're in that aces tier for sure. And I don't even know if they're in a separate tier, you know, by themselves just below that. And conversely, uh, the aces strength is their depth and no one on that team is averaging more than 31 minutes per game. So uh, not only are the talented players playing to their potential, but you know, you think down the line from a future standpoint where they're going to probably be a fairly rested team uh, in comparison to a team like the Connecticut Sun. And we know the New York Liberty are likely going to be in that mix as well. They're expecting to get Sabrina Ionescu back and available tonight. So with that, let's get into the games on tap. And the first one is Liberty at dream 7 30 PM Eastern libs are favored by seven and a half or so. Uh, This is in my opinion, a little revenge spot for Brianna Stewart. Um, We know in her last game, she did what she normally does. Uh, She's second in the league in scoring, but when she last played the dream, it was probably her worst shooting performance um, of her career. So I think she's going to be itching to erase that one. This isn't an official pick per se, but I don't know. I just have a feeling that the Liberty are going to be firing tonight, but what is your best bet? Yeah. So first of all, you laid it out very well. This is the third time the two teams have met already this season. And that's, and that most recent game was really fluky. So my my best bet's a little bit of a weird one. So I'm, I'm going to talk about the bet. Or yeah. I'll save the bet. I'll talk about the game a little bit, and then I'll talk to, about how I got there. So the bet is Atlanta plus three and a half in the second half. So, yeah, like I said, this is the third matchup between these two teams. They have split them. Um, and like you said, the Dream won the most recent matchup. But, you know, it's a little bit of fool's gold when you win a matchup when Brianna Stewart goes one of 14 from the floor. That is not going to happen again. I can, I, I, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to stake all of my, my cred on the fact that she will not go one for 14 from the floor again. Yeah. Um, so, th- th- but this is a good dream, dream team. And actually, to be honest, if I were looking at this, this spread for the full game, I probably would do a tiny lean to the dream. Um, I just don't, the Liberty haven't quite fully clicked to the point where I, I see them as this big a favor on the road, but I am a little bit worried about what you said. I do think that they're going to come out really locked in. I think Stewie, Stewie is, I think, way more competitive than yes. she doesn't like really wear it on her sleeve. I think she's going to have a little little added extra motivation tonight, and, and we're going to see locked in Stewie. 
Uh, so why I like this second half play, though, it kind of plays in that. So if the Liberty do, you know, comes out guns a-blazing, Stewie's got 20 at the half, we can still win this bet, even if the Liberty win by a dozen, even if the Liberty win by, in theory, 20. Because this, what this dream team has done all season is they've fallen behind in the first half and then they kind of clawed their way back in the second half. Um, and in the inverse, the Liberty have gotten off to really fast starts this season and then they've kind of faded down the stretch. So if we see that kind of a game script play out again, you know, it is early enough in the season that these halves and quarter trends are a little bit noisy. Um, but the, when we look at the the dream of the top team in terms of di- di- point differential between second and first half and the Liberty are the second team in terms of the, in the inverse, they're, they're better in the first half and worse in the second half. So I think the stars are just kind of aligning here, along with the fact that it's a game script that we're kind of thinking of Liberty coming out hot, looking for revenge. Yes. You know, maybe they, they get out to this big lead at the half. Our bet's not dead. In fact, it's just beginning because the dream can kind of claw their way back. Um, there's also a couple of player props um, I'll be looking at. So this is a Sabrina Ionescu, as you said, is coming back. Um, she's She has one that has, she has got a, like a big impact on a couple player stats. So Courtney Vandersloot really mm-hmm. looks to get a lot of assists to uh, Sabrina. So with Sabrina back, I'm going to be looking at Sloot's assists over. Um, mm-hmm. I played that in the in the app last night. The lines moved a little bit, um, so it's, it doesn't have quite the same value. But I think I still like it there. But the one I really like is Brianna Stewart. Her assists go down. Um, she becomes more of a scorer. Um, mm-hmm. She lets Sloot do some more of that playmaking. Um, they they posted that number at five and a half. Um, it's already down to four and a half, but I even like it under four and a half as well. So um, those are a couple of, of player props. But yeah, th- this is a funky game. I yeah. but I, I kind of feel like the script is there for a big Liberty first half lead. Um, so if you're yes. on the Liberty side, I think I, if you're targeting them, I would target the first half. Um, but firstly, I'm going to be on the, the dream in the second half plus three and a half is my favorite bet. There you go. I mean, you you said it. the The trends are are what they are, and uh, the Liberty they just they they haven't been putting away opponents a ton. And to your point, the Dream are not going away. Uh, interesting about the the player props as well. I know I noticed what you what you're talking about with Stewie because I was at that game when they lost to the Dream. And first of all, I just I don't think you become a player as dominant as she is without absolutely hating to lose and just <laughs> like just getting so pissed off. Um, and I could see I could see that frustration on her face. Um, and she, you know, picked it up on the defensive end and on the boards. I mean, she's averaging almost 11 uh, rebounds per game. But to your point, don't see her going, you know, one of 14 from the field again. So that's going to be a very fun one. Let's look at the. Second game, and that's going to be Wings at Sparks at 10 p.m. Eastern. Wings slightly favored here by uh, minus one and a half or so. Um, And the Wings actually eked out uh, a win over the Dream the other night. What do you make of this matchup? Yeah, this is two... You know, we talked about the the funky middle of of the WMA. These are two teams that have been vacillating all over the funky middle. The Wings got <laughs> to a, you know a pretty good start. Is looking like they were maybe the third or fourth best team in the league. Then they dropped three in a row. It looked like you know. Then it was like, oh wait, have they played a really soft schedule and they're maybe not all that good? But then they beat the Dream. Yes. Um, the Sparks have been kind of the opposite. You know, they got off. Uh, you know, they lost a couple, but they played the Aces a couple times. So it was like okay, almost the inverse of like, are they just playing a hard schedule? And they rattled off a couple wins but now they've lost three in a row. So um, this is kind of what we're talking about when it's like, you know, trying to, to pin down what exactly it is leading to these teams doing well or or not doing well. Um, I do think with the Sparks, there is a pretty, pretty big key factor. So they have lost these three straight games and all three, they've been without Lexi Brown. She what she had an outstanding start to the season. She kind of has been in that most improved player of the year um, conversation, but she has been out now for the last three games and their offense has really struggled without her. Um, they dropped the, so they played the Lynx twice, who are not a great defense, and they played the Sun ones, who are a very good defense, but they're averaging less than 70 points per game over those three games. Um, and they have not reached 80 in any of those. So now we're seeing them, you know, their team total today is 82 and a half. That just seems too high for me based on what they've been doing in recent games. Um, without Lexi. So this is one where, you know, Dallas defense isn't amazing, but they do have Tierra McCowan back. Um, it's why if if I had to go for a side on this game, I would lean towards the wings. Um, I'm a really big Tierra McCowan fan. Um, I think she has a huge impact both offensively and defensively. Um, but I think that the targeted, my favorite best bet of this is, is the under 82 and a half on that team total. 
Um, player prop wise, uh, speaking to that Tierra McCowan point, um, last game she came back and Kalani Brown is who had been filling in kind of for, for her in, in kind of a like for like in that, in that starting role. She was playing outstanding, um, but her minutes did drop off significantly last game. But the thing is she did outstanding in that, in that shorter minute. So her, her numbers really didn't go all that down, all down all that much. Mm. So I'm curious to see if the books still hang high enough numbers that we can look at, you know, the minutes did drop. And me, you know, she's she has been playing well, but I don't think she's going to be quite as efficient in you know 15 minutes as she was in 28 minutes. So I think there's some room for some unders on Kalani Brown. Um, she, she's just, she's a good player, having a strong start to the season. But with McCallum back, uh, the, the minutes just aren't going to be there. So that's a player that I'm going to be looking to to fade until the books you know adjust to her her minutes total. Astute observation and interesting point about Tierra McCallum. I think that's a big reason why that. Uh, wings dream game the other night was like so ugly i think that atlanta just did not know what to do with tiara mccallan there in the paint it was like she was just like this sort of this wall there so um but yeah the wings like you said both of these teams are like we don't know really who they are yet um and uh the wings have just been kind of up and down and um you know, the sparks, the sparks as well, uh, like you said, struggling there without Lexi in the lineup. All right. So to recap, uh, you like that sparks team total under 82 and a half. And then in the earlier game, Atlanta plus three and a half in the second half of that game. Uh, a couple of fun ones, as we said, Jim Turvey, always a pleasure having you here on buckets. Make sure you follow him at Turvey bets on Twitter, also on the action app, uh, where you log all kinds of bets and, uh, it's an easy way to just keep track. If you don't have your phone on you when you're listening and you want to go back and see, um, you know, what Jim is betting. Uh, and I just want to thank everybody in general for listening to buckets. We are presented by FanDuel and we now, this was our first week doing two episodes per week. So next week, again, we'll have episodes Tuesday and Friday, as mentioned, uh, with the action app, make sure you download that rate and review this podcast. You can win some goodies. Jim Turvey, thanks again. Thank you so much for having me. This is a good time as always. All right, let's get buckets.